it's Thursday morning, I was just walking down the yard and found this sticking out. So it's gonna do a tire in, so I've got the whizzer. I'm gonna cut that off under the ground. doing any punches now we just take this net off the hedge now because we didn't know how long it was going to get us to get round it but we've got to dig this out now and transplant it on a radius for the new gateway so got to check that no birds have nested in the last 36 hours because it's now the first of february as you can see nothing there but yeah we're going to retransplant this hedge on an arc and then this side again. No nest. They don't make nests this time of year anyway. Would you make a nest next to a busy road with no cover whatsoever? There's not even any leaves on or any signs of any buds. Anyway, we're just going to take this out and radius that in. And then this tree that snapped off years ago that's got about four trunks now. That's, that's got to come out because that's in the way. But yeah, it was there. Uh, I don't know whether it's snapped off, one's getting hedge cut. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven trunks. And it keeps hitting people's mirrors. And it's got a bit of decay there. So that's coming out. I'm gonna just pull it out with a digger though. See how rotten it is now in the middle. Over there with some uh, hard cut, putting in the diagonal a bit. See ya. Joe can backload now the 70 yards of the pile. Better not put this lump of concrete in, though, that might damage the chipper, don't you think? Here's an animal, what this grab will pick up. It's no problem holding that huge lump of concrete. We've just got to move this soil now over and then replant that hedge in a radius for the same that side. I've just got the 7-8 out of the dump trailer and we're just going to run some topsoil down the field. And we're taking off where we're sorting this gate out. Frank stripped off this area now so that when we lift this hedge out we'll put the bucket on backwards and scoop it out and replant it along here. Uh, the topsoil that we've took out is now gone in that dip in the field there. Remember we did the far one last year, well we've just done this one now, it's closer. And then there's some rubble now to go in here to get it all in. And then when we've moved the hedge, we've then got to concrete from the road back so that it doesn't screw when the wagon's turning out or the road doesn't fall away as well. You can look here, this is where there's an old drain been and you can see where it's been stoned up with, I think it's ash out of something cinders you can see the stripe there where the drain must be underneath an old field drain just got some stone now we're going to stone this up and then get ready with this metal shutter in so that we can shutter the next sort of bit of the shed 
ready for building the straw walls off that we're going to render. Andrew's just weighing a trailer, he's loading straw up for tomorrow. Rob's just plugging the baler into the fast track to get the bale count off it. Because we've traded it in for a different one and we forgot how many bales it's done. We didn't tell them at the time, but we'll just take a picture of the screen for them and some pictures of the baler and then they can obviously put it on their website and sell it. Right, today's quiz question is how many bales has the baler done? So we used it for three seasons, didn't we? We got it midway through the first season. So let me know in the comments if you know what it's done. Frank's just curved that side round now. He's just back filling underneath the bottom of the headstocks. Um, and then we're gonna put some of this hardcore against there, but we're gonna leave it low. We've got to concrete all this so that it supports the road. When the wagon's turning, you don't want them pulling the curb of the road away. There you go, he's gonna put it on in layers. So we've like cleaned all the silt off the side of the grass verge. There's the old white line. There's a new layer of Tom Mac, and there's a new white line. So if you look, the road's got a foot narrower. And if the same's happened the other side, it's got two foot narrower over the years. Like, we'll, we'll concrete up to this now, which is the curb. But then there's a little bit of a divot there because the tarmac's got three layers on the top. Just moving Nick's old elevator out of the way. It's another buggy birthday bumper. Now, I think I forgot to read Julie's name out yesterday, so happy birthday for yesterday. Anyway, Ryan Wilson, 22. William Johnson is 12. Travis Short is 10. Peter Hounslow is 57. David King, not sure how old he is. Not sure if it's a David King that fixes the electrical stuff, but anyway, he is on there. Katie Langford's 21. Clive Bailey, off the farming forum. People might know him. He's 50 tomorrow, but I didn't want to forget because someone messaged me before. So I'm going to mention it today. Hopefully he might watch it in the morning when he's having his breakfast, so it'll be on the right day. Ken Stott, James Meany is 11, and Sam Dew is on there as well. So happy birthday, everyone there. £27,370. Sorry about the reflection off the skylights in the shed. Is that better? Probably not, no. It's because it's actually quite a bright day. Out of interest, how many people that watch this video are also on the farming forum? Be interested to know. Let me know if you are in the comments below. Better make sure to shut that bonnet properly so it doesn't fly up on the road. Just getting a few bales to block the gateway up. Um, are we still working on it? You can't spike it very easily because they slide because they're stuck on hay caps. Oh no, go! Oh. That's the problem, we're a bit slippy. That one's all right. Them two fell upside down. Oh. There's all the uh, roots out of that tree. When we finish this off, obviously the hedge doesn't come that far now. Do we want post and rail so we can see the field as we come in? Do we want a bunder soil that we can mow? Or make that like, you know, that metal sort of estate fencing that makes it look like it's really expensive. You know, like metal up goes up and then like curves over with like round bar. You could probably get it, you could probably make it really cheaply and it looks quite smart, but I don't know, what do you reckon? What should we do? Post and rail, make some metal fencing or a bunder soil. Andrew's loaded this up now, that's off in the morning to so someone, I think they have a biomass boiler for heating a chicken shed, so he's going to drop that off in the morning. I said morning twice then. Sound like Joe, morning. Anyway, the, when, when he was taking it out of the pile, he found a barn owl, it just kind of like flew out. It hadn't made a nest, it was obviously just roosting in there for, for some strange reason. Why it wasn't in any of the barn owl boxes we've got in the barns, the barn owl come out the stack and then went and slap, sat in the tree. Here's a little video that Andrew got. So that's nice to see. I do see it around the yard sometimes at night, but it's just a shame it isn't living in the barn owl box that we have got in the yard. Richard's been busy today. We've been putting these metal shutters up now and we're gonna concrete to the top and then the straw will sit like that and go all the way up. Well, no, actually this would be concrete. We're making this up as we go along. 
because not many people use a steel frame for a straw build, straw bale building. Some people have put sleepers along, fill it with gravel and stack off the top of it. We've obviously got our own nice slab already in, insulated as well. So we're gonna put concrete in and we're gonna put some timber rails, about two before timber rails, either along the concrete. Then we're gonna fill that with pea gravel, which is what everyone seems to do when they build straw bale buildings. So that if any moisture's in the walls, it fall, finds its way down and out. So the concrete will be like, stop, stop it splashing at the bottom. And then the timber gives us a stop end to render to. So then once we've put this footing in now, all the way along here, we'll then start to infill. And when we get to the girders, the plan is, if you imagine this is the straw bale here, you get, you get a chainsaw and you cut a slice in here and that packs through then and hopefully we can render past and you won't see the girders or do we make a feature of them and plant a timber to them? We don't really know yet. We're still deciding how to do it. There's Chester and, a, and Charlotte and James on a walk. So what's they not seen Chester for a while? There he is. So while we were away, Chester went to a boot camp and started to learn how to walk on the lead better without pulling. He's a little a bit better. Anyway, we never got to Costco last night, run out of time. Anyway, I'm going now, so thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.